With the new information about COVID-19 vaccines and these breakthrough cases coming out just about every day, many of you are asking questions. Dr. Malik has been providing answers, of course, since the beginning of the pandemic. She's here with us tonight. So, doctor, let's get right to the questions. Liz wants to know why are fully vaccinated people testing positive? Good question. So frustrating, right? Because we're yeah. hearing about it more and more. Well, look. The vaccines are highly effective at preventing severe COVID-19, including hospitalization and death. But of course, they are not 100% effective at preventing infection. In other words, to keep you from testing positive at some point, virtually no vaccine can actually do that. A vaccine's ultimate goal is really to keep people from getting really sick. Plus, the COVID-19 vaccines are less effective at preventing infection with this Delta variant, largely because the Delta variant spread so rapidly. So this is why some public health officials are recommending that fully vaccinated people get a booster dose after about eight months or so to enhance your immunity against Delta and other emerging variants. So we're going to see some breakthroughs, but that is to be expected. It feels like the Delta was the game changer. Before that, I think people wouldn't have thought there would be this many breakthrough cases. I agree. Rhonda asks, has anyone died as a result of getting the vaccine? You know, look, some people have died after getting a COVID-19 vaccine, but that does not mean that the vaccine killed them. For example, someone might have a heart attack a day or two after getting a vaccine, and you think it was the vaccine, but it wasn't actually the vaccine. It was something completely unrelated. In fact, only a handful of cases have been linked directly to the vaccines. That's, of course, out of the more than 300 million doses that have been administered here in the U.S. So compare that, of course, to the more than 600,000 people who have died from COVID-19. There is no comparison. It also happened to somebody in a nursing home who's already battling some other illnesses That's right. as well. Nina wants to know, can we mix MNRA vaccines for our third shot. Yeah, so I mean, most experts will suggest that you stay with the same manufacturer you received for your first and second doses, but if that one's not available, you can get the other. So if you got Pfizer for the first one, try to get Pfizer for your booster shot, but if that's not available, then it's okay to go ahead and get Moderna. It's interesting how people feel like they're shopping now for their next vaccine, right? right. Mike asks, I got the J&J &J vaccine back in March when it came out. Now he says, I wish I didn't. I'm hoping I can get a booster to protect myself. So I where know. does he stand? I feel bad for people who have the J&J &J regret, yeah. and they really shouldn't. I mean, Mike, I'm so glad you got vaccinated in the first place back in March. The J&J &J vaccine is still very effective at keeping people from getting really sick and ending up in the hospital or, of course, worse. We hope to have more information about J&J &J booster shots in the next few weeks, so we will keep you posted. If it makes you feel any better, my husband actually got the J&J &J vaccine, so I, too, am curious to find out what those who receive J&J &J will do. I promise I'll let you know. And your husband doesn't have the regret. He does not have the regret, All right. and he's doing just fine. Dr. Malika offers her best advice, but as always, consult your personal doctor before you make any decisions about your health. If you have a question for Dr. Malika, there are three ways to reach her. You can email her, drmalika at cbs.com. On Twitter, she's at Malika Marshall, or you can Facebook message her, Dr. Malika Marshall. I just text her, but I can't give you her number. <laughs> Lisa. I usually swing by her desk. David, doctor, thank you. Come